Recently, the chairperson of SEBI, Ms. Madhuri Puri Butch, at the annual capital markets conference organized by FICI, stated uh, certain points related to the FNO segment, the IPO pricing, and the SEBI's role. She was talking about the various kinds of disclosures that need to be made to the, especially the retail investors, so that they understand the risk in FNO market trading. Uh, Hello everyone, welcome to iExambi. In this way to talk about what is the FNO market and how understanding this is important and helpful for your SEBI grade A exam 2023. So if I talk about FNO to mean futures and options. Futures and options, these are derivative instruments which are used for trading in the derivatives market which is a part of the capital markets which is regulated by SEBI. What are derivative instruments? They are basically a financial instrument which are deriving their value from another uh, asset. And this asset is referred to as the underlying asset. So derivative on its own do not have any value. They derive the value or their value is based on some other asset which is known as the underlying. Now this underlying asset can be anything. It could be a commodity, it could be a share, it could be a, a debt instrument, it could be uh, even currencies. So there are various assets that can act as the underlying asset. FNO market is uh, describing the futures and options in various of these underlying assets and the major one being the stock or the equity shares on which the FNOs or the futures and options are built. If I talk about say futures itself, uh, this is a snapshot uh, taken from the National Stock Exchange for one of the shares say of St State Bank of India. So uh, the State Bank of India shares, the underlying value is given here and then there are various derivatives like the future stock futures of various expiry date that is the future date on which you will be buying or selling the underlying asset which is the uh, State Bank of India's share. So futures contract by definition are exchange traded contracts which help you to buy or sell an underlying asset at a future date at an agreed price. So what that means is that if a uh, uh, you buy a futures contract of stock futures of State Bank of India, the underlying asset, the underlying asset here is the equity share of State Bank of India, okay? Equity share of State Bank of India whose underlying value is 571.5. However, at a future date, say on 29th of September or even beyond that 27th of October or even beyond that 24th of November. If you agree to buy this share, there is a price you will be paying. So there is a market where the pricing of these futures are also there, which help you to buy it in the future at a price that you decide today, but on this particular date. Why are they exchange traded? Because these are available for trading through a stock exchange uh, like for example here the National Stock Exchange or the NSC. So these are a derivative contracts that are used to uh, help hedge for risks related to the underlying asset in future. Now these can be risky because you are betting or you are talking about uh, the price of the underlying asset in future and you may be incorrect about what it uh, turns out to be and therefore there can be a risk associated with trading in them. There are certain margin requirements for trading in the uh, derivatives market and uh, it is important that retail investors understand those risks before investing in them. So uh, if I talk about what the features are of futures, they are standardized contract, right? What that means is, so if I'm talking about the stock futures of State Bank of India, for example, here, the expiry dates or the future dates, as mentioned here, are already stated. They are standardized and they cannot be changed. So if I will, if I want, I cannot make this date as 30th September or I cannot make it as 15th October, right? So these are fixed and standardized uh, instruments that are available. Uh, they are standardized in terms of the delivery date, like I gave this example, or in the quantity of the underlying uh, asset. So in this every future will have a certain fixed number of 
uh, equity of state bank of india that is known as the lot size then the price of the future is also uh, predetermined and the contract cycle is also known as like one month two month three months so all these are standardized they are traded on organized exchanges and they are usually settled in cash what we mean by settling in cash is that at the end of the tenure the settlement date or the expiry date whatever the value or the difference is between uh, uh, the uh, profit and loss arising out of this contract that difference is paid to the buyer or the seller whoever uh, is making a profit and settled in cash and there's no exchange of the underlying asset taking place this requires margin payments when you are entering into contracts so that you know there is less of counterparty risk associated with it so these are certain features of futures that are very very important all these in discussions related to how they are uh, useful why they are used in risk management what are the norms for margin trading and how much of that information is important for you from the exam purpose all these discussions in in addition to the conceptual uh, aspects we keep doing through our videos and our live classes we started with a 100 days live class plan in our sebi grade a 2023 uh, general stream course from the 5th of september we've uh, completed 11 days of that schedule over which we have covered a lot of topics both from paper 1 and paper 2 if i give you a glimpse of the paper 2 we have touched upon various important topics from commerce and accounts like uh, understanding uh, accounting and the process of accounting and what are the key principles the concepts and uh conventions that are used in accountancy then in management again understanding the nature and scope we have touched on various points related to uh the financial markets covering the capital markets and the money markets and the next will we will be taking up the bond markets similarly in costing we have covered the overview of costing and the single output and unit costing aspect and in economics the demand uh, as one of the very important topics have been covered in these sessions and over the next uh, 90 days we will be continuing to cover various topics through discussions with the faculty in the classes if you want to be a part of the entire course which consists of not just these 100 live sessions 100 days live sessions but also a lot of practice tests more than 10000 questions are available to you for practice at different levels in the form of chapter test section test full length practice test in the form of the exam questions you get study material in the form of pdfs which are downloadable you can download and also study at your own leisure there are short and crisp videos of on an average 10 11 minutes which you can again uh, watch and check your understanding through uh, simple questions followed after every video and you will also include interview guidance after your written exams related to these so uh, in addition to 100 days live classes all this is available to you and through our big b days uh, uh, this is available to you at a flat 57% off you can use the code b day to avail of this offer continuing with what is the other part of the fno which is the options options is also a derivative contract they are also traded on the stock exchange however they differ from the futures uh, contracts are that here there is uh, no obligation right so when you enter into a options contract the owner of that option contract has the right but not the obligation to sell or buy the underlying asset in futures there is an obligation if you have entered into a futures contract you have to honor it by buying or selling the underlying asset of course that is settled through the difference in the price in the cash however you have to honor it however in options the owner has the uh, right but not the obligation to do it and this whether they will honor the contract or not is dependent on whether they are in a profitable position or not so if they are not in a profitable position they can decline to 
uh, enter or honor this contract. Of course, now this right, if you are getting this right, it will not be free. You have to pay a premium to get that right and this is known as the option premium and the options can all be of two types if you uh, get a right to buy the underlying asset then it is called a call option however if there is a contract to get the right and not the obligation to sell the underlying asset then it is known as the put option so there are two types of options depending on whether you are looking to buy or sell the underlying asset Right Then the parties in an option are also two. One is the option holder who is also known as the owner of the option contract and this person, the owner is actually the one who has the right and not the obligation. On the other hand, the other is the option writer or the person who is agreeing to give this right to you and he is the one who is earning the premium. So this option premium is paid by the option holder to the option writer right so that uh, these are the two parties and this is also like a standardized contract uh, and is traded on the exchanges now uh, why were we talking about why is SEBI concerned about the disclosures being made in the FNO segment so as simple as it may uh, be sounding right now FNO segment dealing is a risky uh, proposition there are certain risks involved in terms of the exposure you are taking the margins that you are putting in and there can be uh, you know if uh, uh, large amounts are involved you can lose a lot of your own money SEBI here is concerned with the disclosures of the risks that are associated that so that they are evaluating what kind of uh, information and how this information is being shared with the various kind of investors and especially the retail investors so that they understand the kind of risks they are undertaking while trading in uh, the market through futures and options. So this is something that SEBI says that they will be looking into. They are not looking to restrict trading by retail investors, but making them uh, informed enough that there are sufficient disclosures, sufficient understanding that they understand the kind of risk they are undertaking. So this is uh, all about uh, FNO. Uh, the question for you now is that you can write in the comments boxes what are the other derivatives uh, instruments that exist and how are they different from the futures and options. You can write your answers in the comments box. Thank you for joining everybody. Uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for such informative videos and notifications related to them. Thank you.